Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's session, we're going to look at empirical rule. Now, I need to bring to attention that this session we will do in detail when we do normal distribution. I just wanted to introduce it now, since you still have the concept of the mean and the standard deviation uh, from the last session that you would have attended. So now, by the end of the session today, we're going to cover topics looking at how we find um, the distribution of your data in terms of where your data falls within two standard deviation, one standard deviation, and three standard deviation. You will notice on the screen right now, we're using the population parameters, but later on when we do the activities, you will see that I'm using the sample parameters. So now you need to be aware that Sometimes they will give you the population data and you do your analysis on your population data. Sometimes they will give it to you on a sample and you're going to use the sample formulas. It's easy. We can just interchange there. Okay. And there will be some activities. Feel free to pause the video at any point and do the activity on your own and then come back and reflect on the answers. What is empirical rule? The empirical rule is a statistical rule which clear, uh, declares that for a normal distribution, all data will fall within three standard deviation of the mean. The empirical rule is most often used in statistics to anticipate final outcomes. After a standard deviation is calculated and before exact data can be collected, this rule can be used as a rough estimate of the outcome of the data. The probability can be used manual, gathering appropriate data may be time consuming or even impossible to obtain. The empirical rule is also used as a rough way to test the distribution's normality. If too many data points fall outside of the three standard deviation boundaries, this could suggest that the normal distribution is not normal or the distribution is not normal. When we dealt with histogram, when we were looking at the description of the data or summarizing the data, especially for numerical data, we looked at symmetrical information. And we also, when we were looking at the shape of the data, when we were looking at analysis of the data, when we, talked, we spoke about when the mean and the median are equal, we said the data is symmetrical. And in chapter six, that's when we talk about when the data is symmetrical, we say it is normally distributed or it shows the signs of a normal distribution data. Later on in study unit six, you also discuss the um, impact of the mean and the standard deviation on your normal distribution. I'm not going to touch a lot on that, but um, at a high level, when you change the values of the mean, your graph will move horizontally from left to right. And when you change the values of your standard deviation, your graph, your, your graph will become narrower uh, or flatter. And uh, it, it talks more about the spread of your data. With empirical rule, we, this can only be used if the data can be reasonably described by a normal curve. So if your data is skewed or um, is not distributed correctly, um, you've got at the tail ends, you've got too many data, and then at the middle, you've got too many data, then it doesn't become normal. Uh, it's not you are unable to draw a perfect normal graph, then you cannot use the empirical rule. If you are able to use the empirical rule, we always use the word approximate because it's not exactly, it is approximate. So we always say approximately 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean and 95% of the data will fall within two standard deviation away from the mean and 99.7% of the data will fall three standard deviation away from the mean. And I'm going to show you how we calculate that. So this graph shows you how your 68% would look on your normal distribution. So remember, for a normal distribution, it's normally distributed with a mean of zero. And 
<laughs> we have the negative side and the positive side. Hence, the formula has the, the mean minus one times the standard deviation. And since we are using the population on this one, when we're doing exercise, we just replace the population with the standard deviate with the sample statistic. Okay. Population parameters with the sample statistics. A 95% normal curve will look like this, which represent two standard deviation from the mean and a three standard deviation from the mean will look like this. We are going to continue using the same survey data that we have. The last time we met, we calculated the mean and the standard deviation. And if you don't know how to calculate them, you can look at the previous videos, especially on the analysis of data. Our mean, we calculated it and it was 29.55 and our standard deviation was 7.5. Three. Let's assume that the sample age of students who completed the survey is symmetrical with the mean of 29.55 and the standard deviation of 5.3. Now, we are making assumption here. We're not saying this data that we, we have previously um, that I showed you is normally distributed. I'm making an assumption that that follows a normal distribution because the last time we we did the analysis on the age. It was not normally distributed, so you cannot do empirical rule on that data. But for today, for the purpose of showing you as an example, we're going to use this information. So our mean is 29.55 and the standard deviation is 7.53. So we need to always identify the facts given in your statement so that it makes it easy or clearer. Usually, sometimes I draw pictures so that it makes it easy for me to remember things or it unpacks the question easier for me in a visual format. So we have our sample mean and our sample standard deviation, and we can calculate our first uh, one standard deviation away from the mean. Our first calculation, we will use one standard deviation. If you noticed our formula, so the ones that we introduced was the mean plus or minus one times the standard deviation, the sigma. sigma. So now all we just need to do is just use the, the sample statistics that we have in this one times s and then substitute the values into the formula so we will have uh, the mean plus or minus one times the standard deviation remember the plus or minus means negative side and the positive side so we can split them always start with the negative side so 29.55 minus 7.53 and 29.55 plus 7.53 and we get 22.02 and 37.08, which represents 68% of the data falls within those ages. For a two standard deviation, we say the 29.55 minus two times 7.53 and 29.55 plus two times 7.53, and we get 14.49 and 44.61 which refers to 95% of the data falls within 14 and 14.49 and 44.61. For a three standard deviation, we get 29.55 minus three times 7.53 and 29 plus three times 7.53 and we get 6.96 for the negative side and the positive side, we get 52.14, which represent 99.7% of the data falls within those range. Let's look at another example. The static tuition for BCom students is bell-shaped with the mean of 25,400 and the standard deviation of 1,500. What percentage of BCom students have a starting tuition between 22,800 and 28,000. 
to answer this, it means we need to calculate the ranges so that we are able to identify which range falls within a one standard deviation, two standard deviation, or three standard deviation this data falls within. So to do that, we identify the facts given. Then we start calculating our first standard deviation and we find that it is 24,000 and 26,700. Then we calculate our second standard deviation and we find that it is 22,800 and 28,000. And we calculate our third standard deviation or our three standard deviation where we find that it was 21,500 and 29,300. And that will be our answer because it falls within 22,000 and uh, 22,800 and 28,800, which is what the question is asking. And if we know this is 68%, this is 95%, and this is 99.7%. Therefore, the percentage, there will be 95% of the student falls within between those tuition fees. I have their tuition fee between 22,800 and 28,000. Okay. When we do the activity, you can pause the video and do the activity on your own and come back and watch and check if the answers correspond. Okay, question number one. The mean of a distribution is 50 and the standard deviation is 6. Using the empirical rule, Find the percentage that will fall between 38 and 62. I'm going to give you time to answer this. So what are we given? The mean of 50 and the standard deviation of 6. We first calculate our first standard deviation. One standard deviation of the data. We substitute the values. 50 minus 6 and 50 plus 6. The answer is 44 and 56, which is one standard deviation. 68% of the data falls there. Calculate the two standard deviation and find that it is 38 and 62, which represents 95% of the data that falls within that. And the third standard deviation will represent a 99%. 99.7% of the data falls between 32 and 68. Answering the question, which percentage falls between that and that? And that is 95%. 95% of the data falls between 38 and 62. Question number two, a sample of hourly wages of employees who work in a restaurant in a large city has a mean of 75.02 and a standard deviation of 2.09. We have A, B, and C. All of them says using empirical rule, find the range which at least 68%, 95%, and 99.7% of the data will fall. Giving you a minute. You can do number A. The answer I get. Remember, you can pause the video before I give you the answer and answer it yourself and then continue the video so that you can see the answer. For one standard deviation, we find that it falls within 72.93 and 77.11. For a two standard deviation, a two standard deviation, this should be two, a two standard deviation will fall between, and a three standard deviation, a three standard deviation will be between 68.75 and 81.29. 
let's look at another question. And with this kind of a question, you start scratching your head, panicking and getting frustrated in terms of what is it that they need you to do? Easy, you have numerical data. They told you that it's a sample data. You can calculate the mean. So calculate the mean. And let's check if your mean is the same. So remember the mean is the sum of your values divided by how many they are. And we get 3.71. Now I'm going to give you time to calculate the standard deviation. You can pause the video and calculate the sample standard deviation. And here is the answer for the sample standard deviation. The sample standard deviation is given by the square root of your variance, which is the square root of your sum of your observation minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. Substitute the values calculate, solve, and you get the standard deviation of 2.81. Then can calculate, or before I show you that, you then can calculate or find the range for 68, 95, and 99.7 by calculating one standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviations. So for one standard deviation will represent 68% of the data, a two standard deviation and 95% of the data and a three standard deviation will represent 99.7% uh, of the data. On that note, that concludes what I needed to share with you for today. The next time I meet you, please remember to go to Calendly to join the sessions. Um, look at the days that are available and book those sessions so that you don't miss out. The next time we meet, we will be discussing the box plot, so don't forget that. Let me also introduce those who don't know or who are watching this video for the first time, know that I'm representing Pambili Analytics where we're building community of individuals who have analytical skills and need to become more data literate or data driven leaders in within any sector. We're trying to close the gaps when it comes to data, data analytics, as well as numeracy. We offer a range of services, including consulting as well as our flagship skills development in terms of literacy and uh, data literacy and programming. We offer consulting services in terms of data analytics, uh, data science research, and market research consulting. And our flagship skills and development, we offer two types of training that we uh, normally do. It's instructor-led, which is the same as what we have, we, whether you can attend in person or in class uh, or via the Facebook Live, YouTube Live sessions. But if you want consulting of one-on-one -on -one sessions, we charge 150 now, currently running on a special. And if you want, you're interested in learning data analytics and research literacies and so on, you can also look at our self-led online training um, and look at uh, guided learning there. Otherwise, you can find us through YouTube. Please remember to subscribe so that you can get notification when new videos are uploaded as well as you can join. I will really appreciate if you can subscribe, uh, watch the recordings, like, comment, and share the recording. If you need the recording for the current sessions that we are currently running, the free sessions that we are running, make sure that you go to YouTube and join as a member, not just subscribe, but join as a member. We've got different packs for different membership. The first two membership are for those who support me and support the content that we put out there. But if you need access to the recordings, you will have to subscribe. These are monthly subscription. Check carefully the packs 
for those um, membership before you sign in and start uh, paying because um, it's very important to know which membership you want to subscribe to and what type of packs are on there as well. If you want to get hold of us, we are accessible via email, WhatsApp, and our website. Otherwise, you can go through our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining the session and being part of the discussion. Enjoy the rest of the day.